So we are absolutely clear about where we need to be focusing our attention and our struggle. More than 100 years ago, our dear brother, W.B. Du Bois, uh, gave us a, 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 an analysis that helps us understand what we are against. Right before the first imperialist war, known as the uh, World War I, he said, quote, the greatest and almost the only cause of war is Europe's colonial aggression and imperialist expansion. Mm. That's the motivation. That's the driving force. For the boys then and for our commitment to so-called peace movement today, that connection remains unbroken. Stopping the predatory capitalist aggression in the nations of what is now referred to as the global south for access to fossil fuels, precious mineral resources, water, control of land, and the super exploitation of labor remains the starting point for an anti-war pro-peace movement. In other words, the peace movement must be politicized because what the board describes and what Dr. King called the triplets of racism, materialism, and militarism is the material basis for the war agenda. And that material basis is imperialism. So the pro-peace community, they take a moral stance for peace. And that's all right. But for those of us who come from the colonized black and brown peoples and communities and nations, we've got to understand that it's not just about a sense of morality, but it's, it's about the control of us, our land, our people, our resources. And we have to be crystal clear about that. So we bring in that other element, and we say we understand that the real objective is to advance and maintain imperialism. For the Black Alliance of Peace, we assert that the anti-war movement that is reluctant to acknowledge and center imperialism, and specifically U.S. imperialism, as the driving force of war in the 21st century, is an anti-war movement that will, will, will remain irrelevant to struggling peoples of the world who are fighting for national sovereignty, self-determination, and a world free of external domination. A domination still primarily being driven by the interests of the Pan-European Colonial Capitalist Project that was launched in 1492. Right. And as Fanon said, literally created Europe. So that was clear. We're clear about the causes of war. And we're clear about what must be done. We have no illusions. The war to maintain the structure of the global right of supremacy has had both a foreign and domestic expression. On the international level, it takes the form of political subversion, directly, uh, direct military attacks, proxy wars, and economic warfare. Domestically, it takes the form of the Department of Defense program, the 1033 program, that transfers millions of dollars worth of military equipment from the federal government to police forces across this country, which are then deployed against black and brown people from Ferguson to Standing Rock. It is hundreds of black and brown people murdered by police and millions living in fear from checkpoints raised by ICE agents. It's mass incarceration, political surveillance, and growing white vigilantism and the phenomenon of whites calling the police on black and brown people. So we understand what must be done. We have to organize ourselves. We have to build powerful, popular organizations. Black Alliance for Peace is an opening, like the Black is Back Coalition. It is a strategic method to connect, to engage the people to organize the people. Our tagline for the Black Lives of Peace is that we are a people-centered human rights project against war, 
repression, and imperialism. What is people centered human rights? Let me talk about that for a moment. But that's a part of our program we don't get a chance to really uh, elaborate on very often. A people centered human rights project is fundamentally different from the human rights that we hear people like Barack Obama and George Bush talk about. Mm -hmm. They can have been talking about the same kind of concept of human rights that we are talking about. There has to be a difference. We say there is a difference. They talk about a liberal, limited, individualistic, pro-imperialist concept of human rights. Mm -hmm. The human rights we talk about, we say are people-centered. They emanate from the radical black human rights tradition, articulated by people like Du Bois and Malcolm X. We say that people-centered human rights aren't just something that emanates from the state-centric text, but they emanate from the people. They come out of the people's struggle. So our definition of people-centered human rights are those non-oppressive rights that reflect the highest commitment to universal human dignity and social justice that individuals and collectives define and secure for themselves through social struggle. Secure for themselves through social struggle. We don't take it from a UN document. Mm -hmm. We create it ourselves through our own struggle. We define the range of human rights. We say that people say human rights are the attempt to operationalize the need for a radical revolution of values that Dr. King talked about. The People Center Human Rights Project doesn't have to tend to be neutral or objective or non-political. It is a political project that sides with the oppressed. This revolutionary approach to human rights is informed by an analysis of the oppressors and the human social historical context of national and global social relationships. This analysis concludes that all of the forms of contemporary national and global relationships, capitalism, neoliberalism, white supremacy, patriarchy, colonialism, and imperialism are oppressive and serve as structural and ideological impediments for the realization of the full range of human rights. Therefore, you cannot realize human rights within the context of the existing system. This approach to human rights is one that recognizes the only way that we realize our full range of human rights is as a consequence of revolutionary transformation. The People's Center Human Rights Project reflects a commitment to social revolution, a revolutionary process that transforms how we live and relate as a collective humanity to ourselves and to the earth. Therefore, for the members of VAP, we say our responsibility as citizens of the world, as cons here in the center of empire, is to oppose the agenda of the transnational capitalist elite, an agenda that is dependent on war, repression, and imperialism. The, system, the systemic degradation that characterizes the social dispersion of African people, the marginalized, poor, and working class of all oppressed and colonized nations of people by the U.S. Empire strips away the pretense of a benevolent hegemon. The lived experience of oppression means that African American radicals, African people, unlike many white radicals, cannot afford the luxury of being unclear about the nature and interest of the white supremacist patriarchal system. And for us, it is absolutely clear what we have to do. We salute the Black is Black Coalition and the organizing of this gathering and hope that this gathering, this militant expression of outrage and commitment to transformation <coughs> is an experience that helps to sustain the nine years of progress 
and will sustain us as we go forward in building the resistance we have to build. We are clear we are at war. Our analysis of the duopoly must be unsparing. Both parties are the enemies of the people. Both parties are committed to policies that deny the rights to the people of this country and the world. Therefore, we must identify and engage in unrelenting agitation against both parties while urgently developing independent, non-state, and non-electoral independent political structures. While we do this, we must build an anti-war movement and embrace the position of the Black Minds of Peace that says, without any equivocation, not one drop of blood from the working class and poor to defend the interests of the capitalist all the time. That's right. That's right. Thank you. That's right.